Welcome to the History Lord. You join us here today in a very noisy embankment and uh, we're going to be talking about this chap here, Sir Joseph Bazalgette and his contribution to London. Beneath our feet you've got about, uh, oh I think it's 1,300 miles of sewers, and there's 80 miles or so of interconnecting uh, sewers, that, uh, the big sewers, the size of a uh, railway line that go all the way out to the east and the west of London. Now a little confession to make, um, we're filming today a lot in Covent Garden and uh, on the embankment and uh, it's been rather personal for me today because uh, certain things have happened so for example when we filmed about the Corinthia both James and myself have worked there, uh, we filmed about Samuel Plimsoll which is just down the road and uh, my grandfather was a merchant seaman and so Plimsoll um, his inventions played a lot in helping save my grandfather's life but today it's a special one for me because this is Sir Joseph Bazalgette. He was the uh, builder of London's sewer system and for 41 years my dear late father worked at one of his buildings. He worked at Abbey Mills pumping station out in Stratford and that was known when it opened in 1868 as the Cathedral of Sewage. My father as I said was there for 41 years. He loved to call himself his first job title and his first job title there was a flusher. Not a flasher, but a flusher. And he did work in the sewers, which is probably why uh, he was so fastidiously clean in everything else he did. Anyway, I'm digressing again. This is a story of Joseph Bazalgette and the sewers of London. Welcome to London. Joseph Bazalgette was born on the 29th of March, 1819. He was a son of a Royal Navy captain and he was born at Hill Lodge in Enfield. Bazalgette initially worked as a railway engineer and in 1849 he joined the Commission of Sewers. This later became part of the Metropolitan Board of Works and that was created in 1856. When that was created, he was immediately appointed as Chief Engineer. And it was in this role he made his significant contribution to London's city and its health. In the mid-19th century, the population of London numbered around about 2 million, and they were suffering from fatal epidemics of cholera, and thousands were dying. And the Victorians didn't have a cure. It was widely believed that a miasma was the cause, breathing in foul, contaminated air. And it was Dr John Snow who put forward the theory that it was actually a waterborne disease and nothing to do with the bad smells. And there's another uh, video all about Dr. John Snow elsewhere on the channel. Figures for the year 1853 to 54 saw that cholera claimed another 10,700 or so lives. Now moving forward to the summer of 1858, the temperatures were averaging 35 degrees. The Thames that was used quite often as a sewer uh, became fetid and it was nicknamed the Great Stink. It overwhelmed everyone who lived nearby the river, including Parliament. The smell was so bad in Parliament that they had to stop sitting for quite a number of days until lime could be uh, drenched onto the curtains and uh, rehung to try and alleviate some of the smell. Lime was also spread on the Thames foreshore, especially near the mouths of the sewers where it discharged into the river. And they hoped to dissolve the toxic effluent but it wasn't very effective. Parliament actually forced through a legislation in August of 1858, which allowed for a new sewage system to be built in London. Joseph Badgerjet was a Victorian mastermind and a public health visionary, and he made the vast sewer system in London that we still rely on today. Before Bazalgette's design, raw sewage, untreated sewage, would seep from inadequate sewers into the River Thames itself and it turned it into a stinking open sewer. Not just human detritus, but also industrial discharge and uh, discharge from slaughterhouses as well. One of the causes of this uh, increase in sewage was the widespread use of the new flushing toilets, and that exacerbated the problem. It overwhelmed pits and they overflowed into the river. Now, Bazalgette wasn't successful at the start, he was frustrated for a lot of years, drawing up plans for a revolutionary uh, way that the sewers could work. His plans were repeatedly shelved 
or put on the back burners. Eventually, Parliament gave full responsibility to the Metropolitan Board of Works and Bazalgette's plans were instigated. They gave him uh, the ability to borrow up to £3 million, a huge sum at that time. But, like most projects in this country, by the end of it, the price had doubled. It was completed in the 1870s and Bazalgette's design captured both sewage and rainwater and virtually eliminated cholera. It also narrowed the Thames by speeding the flow of the river and thus cleaning it. Now going back to John Snow, his theory about cholera being waterborne was correct, but sadly he died before he was vindicated. Now one of the main things for Bazalgette's plan was constructing pumping stations, vast pumping stations to lift sewage from low-lying sewers so they could be discharged, especially towards the east of London, out of the way of the capital's population. There is a magnificent pumping station at Cross Ness that's now a uh, museum and open to the public. And there's also the wonderful Abbey Mills pumping station, which was called, nicknamed the Cathedral of Sewage when it opened in 1868, as I mentioned earlier. Now, Joseph Bajadet remained chief engineer of the Metropolitan Board of Works for 33 years and he changed the face of London. His embankments reclaimed seven kilometres, about four and a half miles of the riverside and the muddy foreshore. It took, I think, about 50, 55 or 65 acres of land back from the river. These embankments are the Albert Embankment, Victoria and the Chelsea. Not only do they accommodate the low-lying sewers, but they also, some of them, accommodate the uh, underground train lines of the district and circle lines as well. Bazalgette was also a great planner and he designed thoroughfares through London, such as Northumberland Avenue, Shaftesbury Avenue and Charing Cross Road. He also built a number of bridges across the Thames, including Hammersmith and Battersea. Bazalgette is largely an unsung hero today with his sewer network hidden deep beneath the city streets. And this small wall-mounted bust is the only public memorial to Joseph Bazalgette. Now London is moving on. Next door, quite coincidentally to Bazalgette's memorial, is a construction site. At the moment, beneath the Thames, following the line of the Thames, is a new super sewer that will take the cleaning of London's sewers and London's houses into the next century. I think it's only fitting that Bazalgette is overseeing this new super sewer in his London. So that is a story of Bazalgette and his sewers. And by the way, up there, that Romanesque, that Latin uh, inscription, it translates to, he put the river in chains. Well, he certainly did. Thank you very much for watching. We do hope you enjoy these videos. And if you do, please subscribe, tell your friends, tell strangers as well, we don't mind who you tell. And if you want to see what we do outside these videos, please see about James's channels. They're called Last Line Films. And see about my walking tours of London. Go to hislord.co.uk. Thanks for watching. We'll see you very, very soon indeed.